Hi, welcome to Channel 6 TV, Community Focus here in Nelson County. I'm Kenny Fogel, your host. Glad you could join us this evening as it's countdown to election time. November 8th coming up right around the corner. And what are we going to do on that day? We've got several elections coming your way. Obviously, people are keeping up with what's going on nationally and people are keeping up with what's going on locally. But we also got one that's sort of a mixture of the two. We've got a local election that's going to have statewide impacts. And that's the 50th district state representative seat here in Nelson County, and that'll be specifically for Nelson County and the Democratic candidate in here for us right now that's going to be running in the, in the election, Mr. James DeWeese. James, first of all, uh, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you being here, and I know uh, obviously it's raining outside today on the day we're taping. Is that going to slow? I know you've been doing a lot of door-to-door, -door, knocking on door-to-doors. Is that going to slow you down a little bit tonight? Does that give you a break where you can come in and visit with us for a few minutes? Oh, well, it's giving me a break to come in here, but, you know, I've even knocked on doors in the rain, and that's okay. I'm used to working out in the rain. <laughs> before, we get start, before we get started and go into a little bit about what we expect to talk about in the state representative race, tell us a little bit of who is James DeWeese. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm 42 years old. Uh, I married my wife about seven years ago and moved out to Nelson County out here, in which we have two beautiful children. Mm -hmm. uh, Sydney, she's six years old, and Mason's three. So I got little babies. And uh, we moved out here, and I love this place. You know, I, I came out here years ago as a UPS driver, in which my, my wife is a lifelong resident here. Mm -hmm. And uh, absolutely love Nelson County. I couldn't, couldn't imagine a better place to raise children at. Well, I've known I've known your wife's family for several years over in the Bloomfield area. So, yes. Uh, so uh, I thank the world of her dad. So, uh, as, I mean, let's go back to just a second. You mentioned a UPS driver. You yes. Sp you spent a lot of time in this area, so you really know the uh, the streets, the roads, the people in this area fairly well before you ever even moved here. I did. I did. You know, I started at UPS when I was 18 years old as a part timer, mm -hmm. and uh, then at 23, I became a full time package car delivery driver, in which mm -hmm. I started my career right here in the center of Barchtown on 3rd Street. And, uh, and I did various routes outside of here too at different times. But uh, before I finished my career at UPS, I was a uh, driver out here as well from the John Rowland mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's one thing I, it always, uh, I, I guess it's a compliment to the city of Barchtown and Nelson County is when somebody comes here and they like it here. Yes. So that, that, that has to mean something. Something attracted you to come to, to, to Nelson County besides your wife mm -hmm. that, that made you <laughs> like the way of living here. Yes, yes. Uh, this community has strong va uh, family values and a very good, friendly atmosphere. And people wave when you go down the road. I mean, you can't beat it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's wonderful. Well, you know, as you, you've been working, like I said, several years in, in the, uh, as a UPS driver, mm -hmm. and then now you're a little bit different job. It's more of a, uh, I'm, I'm going to say mediation, more of a representative for, for others. So how that, what exactly, describe what it is you do. Well, I'm a business agent for Teamsters Local 89. I represent the UPS workers, and mm -hmm. I cover the UPS workers from southern Indiana down to the Bowling Green area in Kentucky. And, uh, you know, when I started my career, uh, UPS when I was 18 years old. Uh, I wasn't long. I wasn't there too long until I became an assistant union steward at 19, and then mm -hmm. 21. All the guys, all the men and women, elected me to be their union steward. Yeah. So I stayed there till I was 38 years old, in which I was uh, brought on full time to represent them. Why'd they elect you? Well, I was I was very vocal, and uh, very vocal on concerns and the needs of the folks, and mm -hmm. you know I wasn't scared to stand up. Unions, is that something that goes back in your family ways, or is that something you came to as you, when you became an adult? Uh, my grandmother was, was a union steward, and so was my mother. <laughs> so you got a little bit of union <laughs> labor. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about the, the value of labor. I know that's one of the issues that's going to be near and dear to you is, a, is, a, is the right to work issue. That's something that's, a, that's on the table in Frankfurt right now. I mean, it's teetering as to whether we're going to become a right to work state or whether we're not going to be a right to work state. So labor obviously means something more to you than even than maybe even the average person out here right now. Well, yeah, uh, the, you know, working families having a good, strong paycheck is, is very important. It's, it's essential for us to have the type of community that we want to have. Uh, right to work is on the table. Mm -hmm. It's going to be on the table. Uh, Governor Bevan has, has made that one of his priorities in the next legislative session. We have a lot of union members here that are going to be affected, but non-union members are affected as well. The difference in paychecks between a uh, a right to work state and a non right to work state is about close to six thousand dollars difference, fifty seven to fifty nine hundred dollars difference. Mm -hmm. uh, so in a in a non right to work state, all workers making considerable about uh, more amount of money. 
In addition to that, you know, you have more people that has better benefits, uh, health insurance, pensions, retirements, that type of thing. So what happens in a right to work state, or once a state goes right to work, uh, you'll have a portion of people within the, uh, who's under the union contract that will not pay dues at that mm -hmm. point. Uh, we, as, we as a union, we begin to lose leverage in making those contracts good. Uh, and that in turn lowers the bar. And because the union companies will, of course, most likely set the bar of wages and benefits mm -hmm. in the community. So it affects non-union workers as well. It's, uh, it's very, very important to keep the right to work out of this state. Right to work. And again, you know, the argument is right to work is you can, if you want to join a union, you can. If you don't want to join a union, you can't. But right. or you, you choose not to. But what is the ultimate goal? The ultimate goal of someone wanting right to work is it basically at some point to eliminate unions altogether? Yeah, because that's exactly what will happen. And, you know, and you see that in right to work states. The union density shrinks, uh, shrinks mm -hmm. tremendously. So basically the, the value of your labor is not quite the way it used to be. <laughs> that's right. Okay. That's right. And, you know, it, it, you know and, and in our community, we have a lot of union workers. Mm -hmm. And we got no, non-union workers as well. I mean, this is a blue-collar community. I mean, mm -hmm. people wake up to alarm clocks, whether they're working on their farm or they're working, uh, working in the factories. And it's going to affect everyone, including small business. You know, we're blessed with a lot of small business in our community. Yeah. And, of course, people have less money to spend in these small businesses. Well, there's a lot of issues on the table in Frankfurt. I know when you get to Frankfurt, you'll, you, that's one of the issues, but there's a lot of other things going on in Frankfurt. The pension crises right now is something that's going to be affecting us probably maybe the rest of our lives, you know, because yes. it, it, it was so mishandled. And I'm going to use that word mishandled over yep. the last several years. How do we fix that? Is there, is there a way to fix it? Well, I think, I think the one thing that we have to do is make the commitment to make the payments into the pension fund. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only way. I mean, we're going to have to go ahead and just like any budget, you sit down, we're going to have to pay our obligations first. So again, the, the budget is going to be affected. The pension is going to affect other budgets. So we obviously look at either cutting services or yeah. increasing revenue. And I don't know mm -hmm. exactly that, what the balance there would be. Yeah, and when you look at uh, particularly the Kentucky, uh, the teacher's retirement, mm -hmm. okay, that's about $16 million that's infused into our county every year in retirement payments. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, we beg for business to, to bring that type of money into our state. So, yeah. you know, we, we need to keep these retirement systems uh, good for these folks. You know, we made the promises to them, and they kept their end of the bargain. We need to keep our end of the bargain and make those retirement systems. But along with the teachers, you also got the Kentucky retirement systems that not many people's talking about, but they're underfunded too, and they need they need the injections. As Absolutely. Well. well, you know, there's a lot of things going on, and we got a, a Republican governor right now, Governor Bevin. It's already made a lot of impact, and he doesn't even have a Republican House yet. If he ever gets one, someday down the road. And I know that's a big issue with Democrats, is if he does get a Republican House, we've already lost the connect. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that's basically gone. There's other things that would probably go almost immediately if the House did become Republican. So oh, yeah. what, what do you see as a, do you see the danger there, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, on, on top of right to work and, and, our, and our paychecks being cut over time through that legislation, they're looking to repeal the prevailing wage, which is where construction workers will make the prevailing wage on certain jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to hurt a lot of working families. Charter schools is another one. Uh, very limited success that we've seen where you turned our public school systems into a for-profit school system. Mm -hmm. uh, completely against that. That's, I don't think that that's anywhere Kentucky needs to go. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I mean, that, those are some of, the, some of the big issues there that we're about to face in legislation. Mm -hmm. uh, in the coming year. Now, I know obviously uh, we talked about before you and I have talked off camera about uh, your right to life. I mean, your yep. stance on right to life. You're, you're, yeah. you're pro-life. I'm very, yes. Very yes. pro-life and, and, and uh, NRA. Yeah. You yep. I, I believe in pro-guns. And you know, when people talk about the gun legislation, uh, that, you know, that there needs to be uh, uh, gun laws uh, mm -hmm. enacted, you know, the best way to stop gun violence or to curb it is you know we need better jobs, we need better education, then we need to tackle the drug epidemic that we have. Mm -hmm. and, you know, with the drug epidemic, we need to uh, provide harsher laws for the folks that's peddling the drugs. 
Uh, but in addition to that, we need to segregate who has the addiction and really work on the addiction of getting these people the help that they need mm -hmm. and not just be a revolving door uh, into the courts. Economic development is going to be a big issue. Obviously, it's something you deal with in the, in the labor field, but mm -hmm. you have to get into other fields as well. Yeah. They, one of the things we have right now in Nelson County is a labor shortage. We, yes. re we really do have a labor shortage, so either we're going to have to import some people from somewhere else or train some people that are not trained in a particular field. I mean, is there something that you think that you would be more involved in? Well, yeah, yeah, we, we're definitely going to face a labor shortage. You know, we're blessed with the jobs that we have in our community, and we want to always attract more and better jobs. And uh, But that's just, you know, one, going to be one of the challenges that we're going to face and making sure that we have a skilled workforce as well mm -hmm. to take these jobs. You know, along with education, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big proponent of, of public education. We need to really influx a lot of money, build these vocation, uh, voc vocational programs that we have in the high schools, so that these young men and women coming out of high school who does who decides not to go to college has the skills already in place to come into these jobs as our workforce ages. Well, coming into this, you had some ideas about what uh, what it is that you wanted to do. I mean, have you met a lot of people out on the campaign trail? And I mean, I I'm, I'm sure they're giving you suggestions <laughs> of what they would like to see when you, you get to Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. The one thing I do out knocking on doors, I don't just knock on a door and ask for their vote. I ask them what their issues are. Mm -hmm. And you know, and, and some of the main issues I have found uh, that's extremely important to the voters here in our county is one, access to affordable health care. They're yeah. very worried about the health care situation in the state. Yeah. Uh, in addition to that, they're also worried about the drug epidemic. You know, all families are affected by this. How do we get these folks treatment? Let's put them back into society. And, and uh, you know, th those are two of the main ones that I hear more than anything. Well, up to about a, a little less a year ago, you were just more so just a private citizen going to work mm -hmm. every day, something in clicked in you somewhere say, I think I want to run for state representative. <laughs> what was it that gave you that ambition to say, I think I'm going to go file and run for that and put myself through a year's <laughs> worth of, uh, of, right. of, of this? <laughs> well, I think I feel the same frustration as everyone does right now in the elections. You know, we, we feel that government doesn't work for us. Mm -hmm. And you see all the bickering and uh, going back and forth and nothing being accomplished uh, in government, you know. Uh, you know, the, the, the thing about me, I, I feel like Frankfurt's just completely full of lawyers and wealthy businessmen that treat it like a hobby. And I think that's wrong. I'd like to see more working people run for these offices and, uh, and have, a, have a bigger pool of candidates. Well, in the original Constitution, obviously they had far farmers and everybody yeah. of every, every background. And uh, do you see that as, the, as a disadvantage, not being a lawyer? Or do you, you think that's more like what, what the government has been designed for all along? I think that's exactly how it's been designed for the people of the people. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't think you need to be a, a businessman or attorney to be in Frankfurt. I've been in Frankfurt plenty of times advocating for working families, for mm -hmm. or against bills. And, uh, and you know, that's, I, I, feel like, I feel like working folks need, need a better voice there in Frankfurt. Well, you know, the big thing they always say when, when you get into office is transparency. I mean, yes. is that, what is it that people are going to be able to see when James DeWeese gets elected as state representative? Are we going to see you around here anymore? How are they going to get a hold of you? How are they going to let you know what's going on? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, I'm very hands-on. I've, I've represented people since I've been 19 years old, yeah. okay? And, you know, and, and I've been a leader uh, with, with folks. And, you know, some of the things I found, qualities I found that you need to do to represent people and be a leader in your community is one, you need to be trustworthy. You know, you need to really care about their issues and you need to put your faith in God and also faith in people that they, you know, that they, of their needs and their issues. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm very hands-on in what I do now and I'm going to be a hands-on state representative. You know, like I've told people, in addition to having an open door in Frankfurt, an open line, I'll have one here in our community. I mean, I live right over on Poplar Wood Drive. You're welcome to call me up and come by and we'll have a cup of coffee and we'll figure out a solution to the issues, you mm -hmm. know. So, so I, I hope to be very hands-on, meet with, meet with other community leaders, us work together and find solutions to get, to get things done. Is there any particular, you've been, I know you've been to Frankfurt on a lot of issues, is there any particular committees or anything of that nature you've looking forward to or you just want, <laughs> you want to just wait up there and get your feet wet and find out where, where you well, can best fit in? 
Well, I tell you what, I, uh, if, if any committee, maybe the transportation committee, so we can make sure our road projects get done. Uh, well, absolutely. <laughs> I've got a couple in mind right now. Me too. <laughs> well, well, James, is there anything you'd like to let the voters know that, uh, that they don't know about you or you'd like to add that just uh, that was uh, on November the 8th that's going to stick out in their head and say, I think I want to vote for that guy? Well, I'm not a career politician. I'm a leader. And... Uh, I'm really going to work hard for all of us out here in Nelson County, and I appreciate everyone's support. And I'm finding a lot of support as well. Okay. So, well, so you're enjoying this uh, <laughs> foray into the campaigning area? Well, i tell you what. It, it, it's very strenuous mm -hmm. uh, out campaigning. And, and the other day I was out knocking on doors, and I realized something. I'm having the time of my life. I truly am enjoying it. Well, it's the best way to meet new people. I guarantee it is. That. It is. And, and you know, and, and we're blessed with some of the best in this community. Mm -hmm. And I've met some terrific people out on the campaign trail and listen to their concerns. And folks have a lot of them. Yeah. And they're just really happy to vent that somebody cares enough to listen to them. Okay. And, well, you know, and elect me as state representative, I'm going to act on them. Okay. Well, James, we appreciate you <laughs> taking the time out. Like I said, it's a rainy day here today while we're taping, so it gives you a, a little break from uh, out there on the door-to-door. -door. And I know you've been doing a lot of that. I know that's yeah. part of what, you, what you've been doing campaign, more of a your campaign strategy is not necessarily being on the phone. It's more of the shoe leather type. Of that's it. right. That's right. And, you know, it's turned into a pretty strong grassroots campaign. And you can see my signs are starting to move all through the neighborhoods. I'm getting requests daily uh -huh. and volunteers daily. You know, people people want to see a change in. Got a website somebody can go to. If I they do. Want www.jamesdeweese.com. Uh, all right. Yep. So if anybody wants to find out more about you, yep. they can do so. Thank but you. James, appreciate you being here. James DeWeese, <laughs> the Democratic candidate for state representative for the 50th district, which covers Nelson County specifically here in the state of Kentucky. And again, the election day is on Tuesday, November 8th. And if you think that's very far away, then you haven't been looking at the calendar <laughs> lately because there's a lot going on. So stick around. A lot more to come here on Community Focus TV. We'll be talking a lot more of us coming up to election day but pay attention because the elections are very important and we do encourage you to get out and vote. Stick around. A lot more to come here on Channel 6 TV. We'll be right back. Thank you.